Hey guys, what's up? Aquatic Bobs. It's been almost two weeks since we've done a video together. I'm sorry I've been kind of busy. It's not an excuse at all. I, I definitely have had time. But tonight I want to do a little video and update you guys on just a few changes that I've made and some plans. But most importantly, I want to spend a little time talking about how my reef tank has become so successful. And I don't say that arrogantly. I don't say that with pride uh, I say that based on what I hear from you guys the viewers All right, so we're over halfway through the year 2022. I first got into the reef tank hobby, I believe it was 2018 actually. Um, I believe towards the end of 2018 because I remember it being really cold outside. And we, I first started with a betta fish and my wife and I loved it and, and we kind of grew to just appreciate the aquarium hobby in general. Um, you know, not a lot of people think about it, uh, who don't have tanks and whatnot, but this is really something that's amazing to be able to have a piece of this in your home, in your living room. Uh, coral is an animal, even the freshwater side of the hobby, you know, some of the things that people do with plants and, uh, different types of fish and aquascapes and lighting. It's, it's just amazing to me. I, I'm, I'm really just blown away by it. And I, We've gone from heroin to being addicted to heroin and, and painkillers to uh, being passionate and addicted to reef keeping. <laughs> but uh, healthy highs and, and good ways to spend your time, good way to build good relationships too. Uh, but yeah, so I've, I've developed some knowledge, definitely not as much as a lot of, even a lot of you guys um and and some of the major youtubers and hobbyists and and store owners uh but what i do have and what i do know i'm i'm wanting to share with you guys and this isn't just going to be a, a knowledge video it's just going to be some changes that i've done and uh um what's worked for me some numbers that have worked well for me uh, equipment that's worked well for me and really the the kicker of it all is just being consistent with whatever you decide and anyway so let's let's kind of get into just the quick update what i've done first of all about three or four days ago i swapped out my old uh, jabo uh, wave maker gyre pump I, I believe it was the 90 the scp 90 or something like that which is pretty powerful and I had this one laying around up at my dad's house which is way more powerful uh, it says CP 40 watt on there but it, I think on the box it said like the 120 or something um, I'm not really sure I, I know what the pumps are I just don't really know what steps they go and you can look that part up if you'd like and holy crap does this thing I have it on 2 out of 10 20 percent and it's pulsing it's like an alternating pulsing and let's see if i can get yeah look at the polyps there kind of on the right side you can see let's see if we can see them in the back there yeah the green the more green polyps there let's take a look at these here this one was hard to get because the uh the haymaker colony to the right of it was starting to block it out and i've for quite a long time you can see here the haymaker and then behind it is the top shelf aquatic circus freak but for a long time i've been monkeying around trying to get it so i can get good flow on that this pump just blows the crap out of everything over there <laughs> so i can't even turn it up and then you got way in the back let's see if i can do a spot focus yeah that's kind of that's as good as we're going to get there. It's not bad, though. Um, that's going to be our Miss Piggy. 
let's see yeah i can't get it to change up but uh that's the miss piggy and even that one's getting blasted pretty well now and the nice thing about it is it's alternating so I, at first i was worried that it was just going to be blasting a constant direction on it which you don't really want uh, but I worked it out so it's actually alternating current and the polyps are going back and forth up down side to side Which is really cool. Here's the uh, uh, Top shelf aquatics bubble yum, which they're having a live sale going on right now. I actually bought a few new corals Don't tell my wife, but uh, you'll see them on my next video. Holy crap. I'm super excited I'm I'm telling you guys this isn't just like a couple of you know nice corals this is like the cream of the crop I, I just got so really looking forward to that uh, the next thing that I wanted to update you guys on then I want to get to the the success story and tactics is I have decided some of you guys might be bummed out about this I'm kind of sad and distraught but also excited in a way my tank has been so successful as far as you know fragging and being able to sell coral on the side that I can literally run a small business just out of this tank. I get enough growth now on some of these nicer colonies. You know, if I if I get a nice frag of like bubble yum and want to sell it for 500 bucks or something, a nice frag of it, I I can usually sell it pretty quick right away. People are hungry for for these at you know 40% off with some of the big retailers are, and and I say that with a grain of salt because I'm not here to steal. Uh, the hobby and and to take away from what the big retailers are done which are really the backbone of the hobby and I appreciate vendors like Top Shelf Aquatics, Worldwide Corals, Aqua SD, uh, Jason Fox you know some of those Coral Euphoria he's awesome he has nice coral that he prices a little bit cheaper I know some of them are super expensive I, I get that and I've spent my fair share of time complaining about it as well and, and just being frustrated and upset, wishing that I could get more corals. But over time, I've saved up, and I've bought some of the nicest corals in the hobby. And all I have to do is sell a couple frags, and I've made my money back on that coral. And I've hooked other people up with a good deal. But I'm not selling on a big enough scale to affect the aquarium hobby like that. Uh, that's why I don't feel guilty or, or you know <laughs> ashamed of what I'm doing. Uh, plus, we're in a time right now that this has been super helpful for my family. My wife and I are having another son, we just found out, and we're going to, uh, the due date is January 15th, uh, but th every th the price of everything, you guys know, has gone up. It's, it's ridiculous how expensive a hunk of steak is now. Holy crap. Man, you can't get a steak for a single person is like 15 to $20 unless you buy that chuck steak and your teeth fall out while you're chewing it but <laughs> or you choke on it because you can't chew it but anyways uh yeah so it's it's been a blessing to be able to sell some coral and be able to give back to the hobby a little bit and and still be on the receiving end of that as well um so back to the point i'm tearing down my dad the tank at my dad's house we're going to be tearing down the big 300 gallon and the frag tank things just weren't that successful up there and both of us are are busy we're not too busy but we're busy and and we want to be able to spend that time with each other and with our family and we can still do it with this tank uh, we can still have a great relationship together and and be part of the hobby with this tank and what we've decided is we're just going to set up a smaller really nice tank up at my dad's uh, and I think that's the direction we're going to go and we're just going to we're going to keep it more simple but it's still going to be you know, it's still going to be something special. And I just, I don't want my dad to have to keep feeling like he's responsible for that tank up there. We put a lot of money, a lot of time into that system. And if something bad was to happen and I wasn't able to get up there soon or something, uh, it would just be devastating. And, and that, that would just be, it's, it's too hard. I don't want, I don't want him to be bogged down by that. And he still loves this hobby and he still loves the coral and the fish and is really into everything. Um, but there comes a point where you, you have to decide what's important in life, you know, and, and what you love doing, do it and, and do it the best that you freaking can. Uh, but if you're getting distracted by things that you're not super passionate about, it's time to think, what am I going to do? What are some changes that I can make? Um, 
and and how can I do things differently? Uh, you can see this frag rack. This is a bunch of the higher end, more high end acros right here. We're seeing some Miss Piggies, uh, Bubble Yums, a couple Circus Freak frags, um, some Wild Rainbow Millies, uh, Walt Disney, another haymaker up here in the front uh, but yeah really really beautiful frag rack um, here's a uh, Carolina Reaper chalice that or Acropora that I I'm almost ready to give it away for a steal uh, it's taken up a lot of room it's I could really frag it um, but I'd, I'd be willing to sell this for 250 bucks if someone was interested you can message me but so some of the corals you're seeing up here are, are corals that are from my dad's tank recently uh, you can see some more hammers and stuff over there but everything everything up there was doing pretty good still it ha it did hit a rough patch for a little while uh, but we were able to bounce back from it and um, but we, we still decided it's time to kind of move on so Anyways, that's gonna pretty much do it for the update part. Now I just want to spend a few minutes talking to you guys uh, And if you have questions like what certain corals are a lot of people wonder like what different corals are in my tank And maybe sometime I can just do a video explicitly on that I do have a lot of coral and I consistently am fragging and cutting more stuff up um, You can see some nice mushrooms down here and everything and then we got the one and only Grandmaster Cracks, Krakatoa. Let's see, there it is. And then I'll show you guys down here. So anyways, while I'm getting down here, the the big story of this tank, you can see I got a, I got a frag rack in the front. It's kind of hard to see everything on there with the water going. And this is kind of like becoming overflow propagation area but uh, I've had to put a lot of coral down there so the big thing with this tank that I've I've had to learn is apart from consistency so that's the number one thing we all understand that now uh, consistency even if your pH is 7.7 .7, whatever anything lower than that you might want to make some changes but even if it's 7.7 .7, you can't do anything about it keep it 7.7 .7, you know don't keep trying to bump numbers around and and you, you're just rattling your tank you're rattling everything in there that's depending on you for consistency so I'm not going to go into any more detail about that we know that consistency is the number one thing now um, the, the second thing is 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 really being patient and not being afraid um, I I used to Sorry, I'm out of breath just from bending over. I played a bunch of pickleball at work today. Um, happy Labor Day, everybody, by the way. So I used to be so afraid to stick my hand in the tank because some people would be like, oh, be really careful when you put your hands in the tank. You know, like they over-caution you. And I, I used to get afraid to even put my hand in the tank, much less touch a coral. You know, I, I, would, be, I would be so scared to cut a coral and frag a coral that I wouldn't even do it for a long time. But practicing patience when when you're working on your tank and and a fearlessness at the same time is is like it it's kind of a, a little bit of a paradox in, in a sense, but it's so important. So don't be afraid to take some some chances, but do it slowly, right? Don't be afraid to start fragging coral. Don't be afraid to cut a mushroom. Don't be afraid to cut a branch off your acro and, and make your first frag. Don't be afraid to do it, but but do it wisely. Make, make smart choices about that. And if you're really unsure about something, ask for advice, right? We, we have tons of places that we can look online. You can go to find YouTube videos and just about anything. You got Reef to Reef, you got all these different forums and everything. Uh, do do some research too. make sure you know what you're getting yourself into and, and what you're starting uh, the the next thing that I would say is probably equally as important as consistency is do you love what you do do you 
does your heart actually love your tank, your fish, your coral, uh, even doing the maintenance? Do you love taking care of your reef tank? Because if you don't, honestly, it, yeah, you can, you can like coral and you can get excited about a really beautiful coral. But if you don't love taking care of that coral and if you don't love taking care of those fish, chances are you're not going to see the results that you see with people's tanks who love what they do. Maybe it's time to stop wondering why I'm not seeing these results when you spend one hour with your tank a week or you spend one hour of maintenance a month on your tank. Stop wondering why you're not seeing the results. And, and, and on the other end of that is stop wondering why you're not seeing results when you're constantly changing everything. You're changing your lights, you're changing your flow, you're changing your feeding, you're changing what you dose, you're changing your water level, you're changing your salinity, you're trying to change the pH. That's, that's not going to be helpful either. So, I, and that goes kind of back to the consistency thing again. It, it really all kind of stems out of that. Um, but, but don't be afraid to take some chances. Do it wisely. Do some research. And, and ask for help if you need it. Uh, the next thing is, and, and these are kind of, that, that's kind of my general advice. The next thing is I want to give some ranges of numbers, uh, healthy numbers that have worked for my aquarium. Now, this isn't the cure to everyone's tank. I've had many people reach out to me and say, all my numbers are pretty much exactly what yours are, but I'm not seeing the same color. I'm not seeing that fast growth that your Acropora have. I'm not, I'm not seeing all that. So again, this isn't the cure-all, right? There could be stuff in your house that's floating around in your air that, you know, gets into your tank somehow. Like, there's any number of things. But if you keep a healthy house and you keep healthy air and, and healthy water, here's some good ranges that, that you can maybe try to work your way to over a period of time or set it as a goal that you want to keep these numbers and see how things go after two or three months. I'm going to start with the the big one is alkalinity. So I used to keep my elk in the low eights. I started raising it up, and the more I raised it up, the more growth I started to see in Acropora. Uh, the more growth I saw in Acropora, I also was raising my, my lighting slowly. This was about a year ago. and But I started to see a lot less growth in my LPS and corals that do not like as much light and, and don't necessarily like as much alkalinity either. Uh, but so I, I, right now I'm comfortably sitting at about 8.8 .8 to 9.2 and that is a slight swing. Um, and, and I think my tank has gotten used to that swing happening over the course of 24 hours or so. And I see my alkalinity raise the most in the evening overnight. And then it's usually the lowest in at midday. It's usually like 8.9 and usually uh, when I test it in the evening, it's like 9.1. Um, but that's, that's kind of where my elk sits at. Calcium, it's just somewhere around 450, uh, 420 to, to 470, I guess, somewhere in that, that range. Not much needs to be said about that. Uh, something I did learn a, a while back, um, and this is going to lead me to another thought, and there's my dosing pump, is... You can't just dose alkalinity and not calcium. Like if you met, test your water and your calcium's at uh, 430 and your elk is at 6.5, you can't just keep dosing alkalinity. You have to kind of dose it in equal parts, not the same amounts. So for example, I dose, I think it's like, let's see, eight... I dose about 32 milliliters of Reef Code B, which is the buffer, the alkalinity solution, uh, every 24 hours. That's how much goes in. And eight times a day, uh, four milliliters goes in. And I dose half of that for the calcium, so two milliliters eight times a day. And my calcium is a little on the high side still. It's like 475, but it's still fine. Um, and, but, but there's something about the chemistry and the science of the water that they, they bond or something together. Bulk Reef Supply does a good video on it, but you can't just dose one or the other. They need to be dosed together, not exact same amounts again, 
but they need to be dosed together in order for them to actively and efficiently work. Uh, that's, that's about as much in detail as I can explain about that. Just know that that's true. Um, magnesium, again, you know, anything over 1300. Uh, I, mine's at 1420, which is on the higher end. I've seen people with 15, 1600 and still not have issues, but I like right around the 1400 range. Um, things can go better with slightly elevated magnesium. Uh, things can go bad with too low of magnesium. Uh, so those are the three big ones. Uh, next, salinity, I keep mine at 1.025 or about 34.3 uh, if you're measuring in the parts per thousand. And uh, temperature, you can see my temp. 78.1 right now. I have the max set for 78.2 and it can drop as low as 77.7. Um, there's a long story behind that, but I heard too high of temperature can actually cause zooxanthella to not be as dense or or as thick and, and which means as colorful. Uh, so slightly, slightly, slightly cooler temperatures also can be better for, you know, scolies or some really fleshy corals. Um, nitrates and phosphates, these are kind of a big one. Uh, nitrates, I, I've found, so I've had them at one and zero and, and stuff still was okay. Uh, but everything was very bright, not bright, colorful, like bright pale. Um, I've found that the best range that I have seen on my tank and friends tanks is in that eight to 12 range. 8 to 12 parts per million. I know some of you old school reefers, it was like die hard, how do we get our nutrients to zero? But our our equipment now, the protein skimmers and everything that filters the tank, the biological filtration process, it's so thorough that our, our tanks can handle higher nutrients because it's heavy in, heavy out, right? Uh, just like uh, just like the guys at Bulk Reef Supply say, heavy in, heavy out. That's a very important rule. Feed heavy and export heavy. Uh, nitrates, 8 to 12. 8 to 12. When I just checked mine, mine was at 11. Uh, once in a while, I see it drop to 8. If I see that, I know I need to start feeding a little bit more. And I'm just like, wow, this tank looks really good right now. I just cleaned the glass last night and... Looks very nice. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, phosphates, uh, anything below 0 0.04, I think you're missing out on, on some key colors and some growth. Slightly elevated phosphates can lead to faster growth as well. Um, and when I say slightly elevated, I'm talking the difference of like 0 0.002. So a really good number to aim for is 0 0.05, and anywhere between 0 0.04, even up to one, but I'm gonna say 0 0.04 to 0 0.08, I, that's where I aim for my tank. Again, this isn't the, these aren't the cure-all numbers, but this is what I have seen in my experience that has been the best, and, and I've witnessed the best results. And that being said, my tank is still getting more colorful almost every day I, I notice more uh, coral lights popping on different corals in different areas and different colors and and growth and yeah so this is this is what's worked for me this is where I found my sweet spots to be and even some of my friends who have asked for advice and I've helped uh, this is this is what I've witnessed and these are the numbers that I've seen so with that being said I think the last thing to touch on I don't I, I don't want to keep going I could talk all night about this because I, I love it and but it's the par and par is so it's such a touchy subject because just because you get a Chinese black box LED light and you hit 350 par where your Acropora are sitting it might not give you the same results as if you put up a couple of Ecotech, you know, Radeon Gen 6 lights uh, or the Neptune skies or some of these higher quality lights that have that spectrum that peaks. And so what I found is supplementing T5 bulbs is really, really helpful. I run two, just two 24 inch uh, 
T5 bulbs, both blue plus, and lifted up at the back part of my tank, and it spreads throughout the whole tank because that's what T5 does, it blankets light. And I found that supplemental lighting to, to be like the perfect addition to these LEDs. And again, I run two AI Hydra 32s, a Radeon Gen 4 Pro, Ecotech Radeon, and then a Reef Bright LED strip also in front, the Atinic Blue um, 48 inch strip. And so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna generalize the par ranges. Acropora, most Acropora can still do really well in as low as 200 par. Some of the acros in my tank are in about 200 par. Uh, this PC rainbow down here is, if I can get it, that's 200 par. Uh, this Bill Murray here is 250. Most of these other ones up top here are about 350. Um, and that's, you know, 275 to 350. I think it's perfect for Acropora. Uh, literally perfect. Great, great numbers, a great range. Um, Montipora, some of that other SPS, I would say high 100s, 175 to 200 tops on those. And they can even do it pretty well in lower light. They're not going to get as bright and vivid of colors if you have them too, too low of light. Uh, but they can do really well. Um, that I know that's kind of a broad generalization for those. But then you get down to your LPS. You know, you've got uh, Lobophilia, Duncan Corals, Trachies, Chalice, Donut Corals, Acanthophilias. Uh, some of your LPS corals, uh, 125 is, and, and torches and hammers, you can get up to 150 and still be okay, but, but just know they're going to be sensitive at that light. Um, I would say 75 up to 150 is a good range, and I know I'm not revealing any like new secret here with these, uh, but so many people have asked, you know, all these are all the questions that you guys have asked. I'm just trying to answer as many as I can in one video. Um, but but that's I most of my sand bed I, I told you guys is high. Most of my sand bed is honestly about 150. Uh, some p spots even kind of peak out at like 175, like right where that lobo is down here. Uh, and it's it's been slowly adjusted to that. I wouldn't just throw a coral in your tank and instantly let it get hit with that because uh, some corals will respond really poorly very quickly to that. Uh, zoanthids and other soft corals, I, I would say they could be at the higher end of what LPS get, 150, maybe even up to 175, but that's really pushing it. At that point, you're really, you're not giving them what they need to be the most colorful. Um, I would still say 125, buck 25, give or take a little uh, for zoas and, and mushrooms, but um, that's, that's going to do it for this video. I don't want to keep going on and I still want to be able to go over some some of these things separately in more detail in, in some other videos um, but yeah you guys this this is part of what I love about this hobby is you guys and that's why I started the YouTube channel uh, over a year ago and and I've I've just I've loved making videos I really do I know I don't do it a, a ton uh, right now uh, but just know, like, you guys are the highlight of these videos. Obviously, you don't really make videos if nobody's going to watch, but um, I, I appreciate you guys so much. And I want you guys to know that, like, really, truly, genuinely appreciate you guys. I'm not just another YouTuber that says, oh, yeah, thanks for watching. Love you guys. This is awesome that you guys are making my life better and making me popular. Like, I, I genuinely appreciate you guys that you care. And, and that you're passionate about this hobby and that you're passionate about learning and, and getting more experience from others and practicing what you learn. I, I appreciate that about most of you guys. I know I always get a few people that give me a thumbs down and just, you know, are just cruel, just nasty, whatever. And, and I've come to accept that at first. It hurt my feelings. It did. <laughs> I, I would sometimes sit and wonder, like, why did they give me a thumbs down? What what did I do? What can I improve on? What can I do better? And I still have a lot of room to grow, a lot of room for improvement. So if you want to give me a thumbs down, cool, but but please let me know why. And if you've been watching the channel, or even if you're new here, 
I, I still would ask you to consider subscribing, giving me a thumbs up, and also leaving a comment. Uh, let me know what's been your success story, and, and let me know uh, what's worked the best, the best for you, and, and what's given your tank the most trouble. Sorry, I got cut out there, and, and I'd love to hear more from you guys on that. So, All right, thanks for watching, guys. This has been another great video, some great time together. I know it's been a long one, but I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Aquatic Bob's out.